Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Pastor, uh, recently I was reading that Mr. Biden is forcing a faith-based child care act to affirm LGBT ideology or lose federal funding. The, the premise of what he's wanting to do, quote, is within the White House, pass a bill that would require preschool and child care facilities to abide by federal non-discrimination laws related to gender identity and sexual orientation. This means that faith-based facilities that affirm biblical beliefs on marriage and gender would not be able to participate because they do not hold LGBT ideology. <laughs> it's ridiculous. In 1 Timothy 4, 7, it says, wrote, but reject profane fables. What's your thoughts on all of this, Pastor, and, and how it's how this is affecting the church? I don't know how it could affect our church. It won't affect this church. You know, I don't take federal funds. You know, I'm not going to have the federal government tell me how to spend money to further the gospel or minister to the people of this church. And so, because we do not take funds, uh, that's not going to affect us in that in that regard at all. You know, so... How should the church respond? Well, one, perhaps the church should be aware of the fact that any time you take money from the government, the government owns, owns you. Um, maybe we ought to be well, aware of that. Maybe churches that are relying on the government to support them ought to be aware of that. You know, for us, I was taught very early that my the one who supports me, my foundation isn't going to be the government, my foundation is going to be the Lord who raised us up and who sustains us. And so the idea that uh, that their ideology can be forced upon churches and actually blackmailing them to, to, uh, to kowtow to this nonsense about, uh, uh, you know, having multiple genders and all, that is a form of, that is pure insanity that is insane, you know, um, I don't see any reason why the church or any church should ever kowtow to that kind of discri discrimination against the church. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a 2,000 year Christian um, uh, tradition and biblical understanding as it pertains to how to raise children, what a family is, what a husband is, what a wife is, and all of that. And so for churches to be told you're going to begin to preach what we the the ones who crucified Christ we that group of people you're going to count out to us or you're not going to get our money I would say so keep your money <laughs> you know I'm I'm not going to ask and anyway it's not your money anyway you are you are undermining and usurping the uh, the the right to choose as I as a Christian who also pay taxes um, you know should have something to say about that so. I just think, you know, Mr. Biden has a tendency of digging a hole and going deeper. Hmm. I mean, this is this is somebody that that is in, in, under the control of somebody else. I mean, he certainly doesn't have his own control. He's certainly not self-controlled. But this is somebody who has uh, presented himself in a moderate fashion, but in fact is a puppet to somebody else. And I don't I don't have a clue who the actual person behind the curtain who's doing all the talking on his behalf is. But America is getting sick of it. America is getting sick of this insanity, you know, the the kinds of things that are taking place in uh, in our world today. I mean, my goodness, this is this is the ideology of hate. That's what it is. And to to tell us, to tell the church that uh, we cannot raise our children to believe what Scripture teaches, which is, um, you know, to respect a, a woman, respect a man. To, to, to care for other people and all that we do, to try and paint us as haters if we don't do that is just pure insanity and nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't that long ago that the government was giving money to, to churches and, and uh, all you needed to do really was apply for it and, and they're just giving money and, and people act as if that's free. It's not free, somebody paid taxes on that. Somebody is paying for that even now so churches began to take these grants that were actually never expected to be paid back. And I could have applied for one. The amount of employees I have, 
we're, we're regarded as a uh, small business, John. And I could have taken a grant and gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars or more in order to pay our bills and keep the lights on here. And, and uh, one of my friends called and said, are you gonna apply for the grants? And I said, no, I said, God raised this church up and God is very capable of sustaining it. Why would I look to the hand of the government to uphold me when it's God who raised us up? And I said, no, I'm not gonna do that, which we didn't. We haven't taken a dime from the government and we won't, why? because this church is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. Jesus bought it with his blood. And I'm certainly not gonna have Mr. Biden or any other person who's, who's twisted uh, tell us what to do. I'm and, not gonna do that. And it's a blatant attack against our children. It's a blatant attack against God's word uh, for our president, which is founded on the founding fathers of biblical foundations. Absolutely. To now turn and, and try to indoctrinate and pass ideologies, which is, would you think, Pastor, you know, if the Christians don't abide by this, there's a penalty, you know, and and we don't want to get him mad, you know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he's losing his patience. Right? He's losing his patience. And we don't want, we don't want that. No, of course. but yet on the flip side, you know, if we stand up for what we believe, we're considered the Christians or the church is considered to be haters or we are haters. We are haters of evil and promoters of good. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the church needs to stand up. We need to unite and we need to say, you've, you've gone as far as you're gonna go. You're not gonna go any further. You're, you're trying to control every aspect of my life. I didn't give you permission to do that. You know, I'm not yielding to your authority. You're not gonna do it. And so at a certain point you draw a line and you actually hold to it. Unlike the previous, not Trump, but the previous president who drew his line and was constantly moving because he didn't have a backbone. You know, the church has to have a backbone. We need to say, no, we're not going to do what you said. We will obey God rather than men. And so, no, it, it, the government doesn't tell me as a preacher what to preach. We haven't gotten to that place yet. Pray to God that the church wakes up enough to realize we need to elect officials that come in who actually don't violate our consciences through their laws. And maybe this is one of the ways that the church will finally wake up. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for that. Uh, we want to... Uh, Invite you guys to our Wednesday evening service tomorrow at 7 p.m. We'll be taking communion, uh, and you you are taking us through Titus chapter chapter one verses 10 to the end of the chapter. Yes, and so I want to invite you guys to come on out to hear God's word. And what a great way, Pastor, to go into the Thanksgiving season yeah. with having communion with our Lord and Savior Amen. Jesus Christ. And Amen. so I want to invite you guys to come on out. There's so much things to be thankful for. And Pastor, thank you again for spending time with us. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Amen.